The thing I didn't mention there in the introduction as well are the extremes of temperature that, that you have dealt with, running across Death Valley in 150 degrees. Yeah, you know, I, I've been into this theory of never stop exploring your potential. So you're right, I did run 50 marathons in all 50 US states in 50 days, which many people thought would be impossible, myself included. And I thought, well, what's next? And this is a photo of running across uh, Death Valley in the middle of summer. So in this photo, it's uh, 127 degrees. It's about 55 degrees uh, centigrade. And it's a 135 mile continuous foot race from the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere which is bad water, to the top of Mount Whitney, which is the highest point in the contiguous US. So the idea is to run from the lowest point to the highest point over 135 miles and, and somehow live. And this crossing took me 28 hours of nonstop running. And to... why, why are you running on the white line? <laughs> it's a good question. So the temperature on the, on the asphalt and the black is actually 200 degrees, and your shoes will melt. So the white deflects the sun, and it's not quite as hot. So you must stay on the white line to avoid your shoes melting like marshmallows. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. Not, not because the police were after you saying, are you drunk? <laughs> why would you do this? And I imagine an awful lot of people ask you why, and we may touch on that. But, but how is also a, a, a question, I think, worth answering, and, and particularly in, in this setting. How do you do it? And when did you realize that, that you could? Well, I think a, a race like this 135-mile foot race, I mean, you run the first half of it with your legs and the, the second half with your mind. So I think that how do you do it? It's as much of a, a mental challenge as a physical challenge. Uh, you, your body can only go so far. I learned about my particular talent uh, on, a, on a bad night of drinking. <laughs> uh, my 30th birthday, I actually walked out of a bar. I hadn't, uh, you know, out of a pub, a nightclub. Hadn't been running for about a decade, used to love to run as a kid, and said to my mates, you know, I'm going to run 30 miles tonight to celebrate my 30th birthday. And they said, you're drunk, you know, what do you, uh... and I said, I am, but I'm still going to do it. So I literally walked out of the bar at 11 at night, uh, ran straight through the night, 30 miles, and thought, that was extraordinary. Why am I alive? How, how could I do that? And just got worse from there. Yeah. And you got a real kick from that, did you? You know, when I sobered up, I thought, you know, this is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever done. I was like, what the hell am I doing? Uh, but it felt right. It felt like I, you know, there was something about the purpose of what I was doing that meant something to me. I mean, I was a business guy. You know, I'd gone through and got a, uh, an MBA, you know, business degree, and I was in the corporate world, and it wasn't me. I, I didn't feel natural, comfortable in my own skin, and running all night like that. It, it awoken something in me, a true passion, and yeah. And I, this was your epiphany. It was, you know, a couple of blisters, and you know, yeah, like that a little good. chafing where the sun don't shine, and there I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, the fifty marathons in in fifty days presumably got a lot of attention, and and you were visiting all fifty states, or, or could you start off quietly and then finish with a big crowd? Yeah, yeah. so um, there are 50 marathons in all of the 50 U.S. states. Uh, most of them were organized marathons. Some of them were recreations of that city's marathon. Iowa on a Tuesday, there's no organized marathon. So the race director of the Iowa Marathon set up his official starting line, let us follow the sanctioned certified course and finish at the finish line. This particular photo is the New York City Marathon, which was the 50th in 50 consecutive days. And I'll never forget, that was my strongest marathon. So I finished this particular run in, in three hours and uh, 30 seconds, which is pretty respectable if any of you run marathons. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, a race official came running over to me after and said, I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you're standing. Did you, did you want to beat Lance? It was the year that Lance Armstrong had done it. I was about 10 seconds behind him. He looked horrible, by the way. It was, that was hard for him. But, I said, no, yeah, I, had, you look so good. I had no desire to beat Lance Armstrong. You know, the only person I wanted to beat was uh, P. Diddy, the rap star. He was, <laughs> I saw him at the start, and he had all these gold chains. He was surrounded by this boss. I thought, that joker beats me. Even after 50 marathons, I'll be so humiliated. So, <laughs> yeah. in, in terms of sort of after your 30th birthday, then sort of resetting your body, what, what did you do? to change what you ate, how you lived, and, and you know, change your whole course of life? Well, I, you know, I famously ate a lot of junk food early in my career. In fact, I'll never live down the story, but I was out on a long run one night. I was, had no food. I did have a cell phone and a credit card, and I thought, what do I do? I'm starving. So I ordered a pizza. <laughs> Just had him deliver it to me out on the run. I kind of rolled it up in this big burrito and kind of <laughs> ate it as I ran. 
And uh, people say, I was incredibly at a pizza delivery. I thought that was the smartest thing ever, right? <laughs> Uh, but I've refined my diet over, over the years to, uh, to really hone in what helps me perform at my best. And so I've evolved. People change. I no longer eat pizza. And I've uh, really perfected my diet uh, based on my performance. Yeah. The technology side of things in, in your life is extraordinary as well. Just explain about the watch that you wear when you're running. Yeah, I've been a very, you know, an early adapter of technology, and I, I run with a, um, a Moto Active device. I don't know if anyone's heard of Moto Active. It's by uh, Motorola Mobility, which Google now owns. And it basically keeps a biomet biometric record of my pulse through a, a, a wireless earbud, so it's Bluetooth technology. And then when I walk back into my house, uh, when I get within my Wi-Fi, it uploads it all to the cloud. Automatically? Just automatically. <laughs> So I can look at um, you know, how many miles I covered, what was my pace. I can actually view my route. I can look at feet ascending, descending. I can look at how many calories I burned. And I'm going to get some of those glasses and you know, maybe spot a pizza. And they'll say, no, 1,000 calories. You only burned 800. You, you can't eat that. But yeah, it's, it's quite sophisticated technology. It lets me track uh, my performance daily. And yeah. what for you is the most enjoyable moment of, of any given challenge? The pain. I like that. <laughs> no, I mean, to me, it's the idea of Are never, you being serious or are you joking? I, I think that, no, in, in a sense, I think that, you know, we, at least in the U.S., have thought in the absence of pain, in, in the presence of complete comfort, we'd be happy. That was the key to happiness is comfort. And I think we're so comfortable, we're miserable. So I find, as many of these gentlemen do, that I'm never more alive than when I'm struggling for something and in pain. And I really embrace that. But it's the idea of never stop exploring, of, of being the best me that I can be and constantly setting the bar higher and higher and looking for that next challenge, yeah.